There are so many numbers in our lives, and they seem to be increasing all the time. And Scripture tells us that of all the numbers in the world, sometimes it comes down to just a few, sometimes just one to make a difference. So as we begin our study of the book of Exodus, there is one ruler named Pharaoh. This Pharaoh has just come to power, and Scripture anonymously tells us that this Pharaoh did not remember Joseph. Joseph, the one who stewarded the nation of Egypt through seven years of severe famine. This one person had forgotten what Joseph had done and saw the numbers of Joseph's people, the Hebrews, increasing all around the nation, and Pharaoh grew worried. So Pharaoh brought together those midwives that helped the Hebrew women give birth. And Pharaoh commanded them to kill every Hebrew baby boy that was born. The midwives went off and carried on with their tasks. And Pharaoh noticed that the numbers of Hebrew babies, particularly boys, kept increasing. So Pharaoh called the midwives in front of him again. And two midwives named Shipra and Pua replied to Pharaoh with what seemed to be words of such creative, nonviolent resistance. They said, O oh, Pharaoh, the Hebrews are so vigorous that when we come, the women have already given birth. So it was true with another single person named Jochebed. Jochebed gave birth to a, a vibrant and healthy baby boy. Jochebed saw how how vigorous this baby was, and she hid him in the house for three months. And after three months, when she couldn't hide him anymore, she made a, a small basket and sealed it so it could float on the water, and then sent her elder daughter named Miriam to keep a watch over that basket. For within that basket was that baby boy. One day, when the daughter of Pharaoh was down bathing at the river, She saw this basket, had it brought over, and she saw within that basket was this baby boy, and and she, she wanted to take it and give it a home. She did so, and as she did that, Miriam, Moses' sister, came and so courageously said, can I help find a nurse for this young child? And Pharaoh's daughter said yes. Throughout this text, there are so many single individuals that have changed the course of history. Shipra and Pua, Jochebed, Miriam, and then Pharaoh's daughter. I'm reminded of our text from the epistle for this week. And Paul is writing to the fledgling church in Rome and encouraging them to nurture, cultivate, and share their gifts. Now, The word for gifts that's used in the New Testament is charisma. And just taking the first letters of that word, we come to the the word for God's grace, which is charis. God's grace, charis, is the root word for charisma, our gifts. So the question that I have for you today is, how, by God's grace, are you sharing your gifts to change the world? For we see in the life of Jochebed how one person can make a difference. We see in Miriam's courage how one person can make a difference. We see in Pharaoh's daughter how her defiance of her father's death sentence made a difference. And certainly we see in Shipra and Pua how these two individuals changed the course of the history of the Hebrew nation. Friends, if it was up to you and I, we might look to the corridors of power to find those that can make a difference, to can change the course of history and be the paradigm shifters, but God is not us. God looks to those who are unknown to be the midwives of change. God looks to those who are unknown to be the sowers of the new seed. God looks to the unknown to start new communities and new nations. God looks to those who are unknown to help lead us to the horizons in which God's kingdom of love, light, and life are brought to earth a little more as they are in heaven. 
So friends, today, for all the numbers in the world, it takes one, it takes you, to share your gifts, your charisma, by God's grace, God's charis. Share your gifts today. We need your gifts. This community needs your charisma. This world needs your gifts. May it be so by God's grace. Peace be with you.